The Pilatus PC6 Porter is modeled by several manufacturers. In this video, we'll take a look at the Artec version and see how this RC model goes together. is designed and built by the Swiss. It first flew in 1959 and quickly became one of the world's most popular short takeoff and landing utility aircraft. It's easy to recognize by its long narrow nose and stair-stepped vertical stabilizer. The full-scale Porter has a wingspan of 52 feet and a length of just under 36 feet. It's powered by a Pratt & Whitney turbine engine that produces 550 shaft horsepower. The Porter is known for its ability to fly from rugged, remote locations around the world. It can clear a 50-foot obstacle in under 1,500 feet, both on takeoff and landing. And it's not unusual to see Porters equipped with skis or floats. The Artec version of the Porter is available from several different retailers. It has a 67-inch wingspan, is 49 inches long, and weighs in at about 4.1 pounds. That makes this about a one-ninth scale model. The model is powered by a 4212 700 kV motor controlled with a 40 amp speed control. The recommended battery is a 3000 milliamp hour four cell LiPo. This version of the Porter has two unique features. One is a glider release mechanism which allows you to tow a glider to release altitude and release from the porter if there's a problem. The other is a small bottom-mounted remotely controlled trapdoor that allows you to drop skydivers or candy. Well, enough of this background stuff. Let's get started. As you can see, we've got the model out of the box. At this point, I'd often show you a picture of all the pieces in the box, but in this case, there really wasn't much to see. All of the pieces came in a box similar to this one, wrapped in bubble wrap. And so the big box that was on the table a minute ago was filled with these boxes. Needless to say, everything came through the shipping process just fine. So you can see there aren't very many pieces. We've got the wings, the vertical and the horizontal stabilizers here. We've got some landing gear. It comes with a couple of props, screws and a screwdriver in a plastic bag some Y connects if that's how you choose to connect the, uh, the flight controls. If you've got a multi-channel receiver, you may want to uh, wire uh, directly to the various channels and do some mixing. We'll talk about that later. And then the fuselage. And so all in all, it looks really good and it should come together pretty quick. Now, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes here with the instructions to make sure I understand what's going to be happening and we'll get started in just a second. Well, I've looked over the instructions and they show a pretty good order of putting things together. They made sense to me. And so the first step is putting on the landing gear. So the landing gear is just this part right here. It slides into a slot, just drops in, and then the back is going to sit between two screws here in the back. Now those are covered by a couple of small plastic parts. We're just going to push those into the holes that are reserved for them there. Here's the other one. And then we're going to use four of these uh, two by eight millimeter screws to hold them in. And they just screw right in like that. Now one of the things I found was a little frustrating for me is I inventoried my parts and I'm missing two um, two by 20 millimeter screws that I'm going to need to put these uh, landing gear support structures on. And um, fortunately, I had a couple of screws that'll work here in the workshop. Um, but that was just a little, a little frustrating that they missed that in the packing quality control. They got a bunch of these 8 millimeter long screws and several of the 12 millimeter long screws that we're going to be using to put this together but the instructions called for 20 millimeter screws. So I don't know if that's a misprint or what, but I'm going to use them since I've got them. So that's the landing gear on the bottom. 
And then here on the top, we're just going to put the strut in there, and then it can bend a little bit on this. And this is where I'm going to use that 20 millimeter screw that I found. And I'm going to go into the hole that is drilled in that for me. And just screw it in. It looks like it's a little bit of overkill, but that's what it's called for. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. And we'll be back when I get them all cinched down. Okay, now that the landing gear is on, uh, we're going to add the, the pieces of the empennage. And in this case, it just slides in. And then, as you can see, there's a hook down here. And that hooks into a layer of the foam down there to keep it nice and secure. So we'll get it in there, push it down, and then slide it forward. And you can see that's nice and clear, and the decals line up very nicely there. So we're in good shape there. Next is the horizontal stabilizer, and that's going to go in essentially the same way. It's going to go underneath the vertical stabilizer and the rudder, and then we're going to use some screws to screw that down. And so we got it in there nice. The cows match up. So now it's going to be a matter of just flipping it over and putting the uh, 2 by 12 millimeter screws into the bottom. So let's do that. We've got a couple of slots right there. Guide those down and then hopefully they're going to fit without too much fishing around to get it into the, um, the receivers down there. So get that in there, get it tightened up. There we go. And guide that other one down there. Get that in and get that tightened up in there too. So I'm going to take a look in there to make sure that I've got them mounted in there. Uh, and if you have to fish around a little bit, you know, that's fine. That's just kind of the deal. It's such a long drop to get the little point of that screw into that plastic receiver can sometimes be a challenge. So I'm going to look to make sure that I've got that. The only other thing I would note at this point is you notice I didn't use any glue. Some guys like to glue the tail feathers on. Um, my view is a couple of seconds on a pre-flight to, to make sure that this is secure is better. That way, if you have one of those oops moments and... Uh, and you break something, you can uh, sometimes get spare parts, in which case you don't have to do surgery on the fuselage to break the glue seal. So uh, with these bolt together models, generally, I just bolt them together. Now the next step in the instructions is to put the, uh, the wing on. And if you've got the ready to fly version, that's what comes next. But if you're flying with the ARF, you're gonna need to install some electronics, that is your receiver and any other things that you might wanna add. I've added a couple of things, so let's talk about those right now. Now, if you've been around these foam arfs for any length of time, you've probably maybe come to the conclusion that there's probably a law that says that whatever connector batteries you have, the model's going to come with a different connector. And that seems to be the case with this one as well. We've got XT60s coming off the ESC, and so um, I was needed then to make an adapter because I have batteries that have these uh, uh, four millimeter banana plugs on them. And so I needed to be able to convert one to the other. And so that's just a matter of spending a little bit of time with my soldering gun um, and then the uh, uh, connectors, blank connectors, that I could solder onto the wires to get them together. Now the other thing I did in here is I added a pass-through plug. And this little guy, uh, you can get them for these kind of connectors, you can get them for Dean's connectors. Uh, it has this little cap on it with a JST outlet on it, and I'm going to be plugging that into this little JST here in the uh, model, which goes to my um, universal VEC, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But those things are going to go together just like that, so it allows me to um, uh, power my UBEC from the battery and then plug this in here. Now this gives me quite a lot of extra stuff that's going to have to stuff in there and so that's probably going to be a challenge. If you happen to have a battery with the right kind of connector, you're going to be good to go. 
So let's uh, take a look at the other side of this uh, here in the um, underneath the wing saddle because that's what's preventing us from putting the wings on now. That's getting the, the uh, receiver all set up. Okay, as I mentioned, um, the kit came with several Y connectors. And uh, while I have enough channels here on this nine channel receiver to um, mix channels to do separate ailerons and so forth, um, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use the Y connectors for the ailerons, Y connector for the flaps, and then Y connector uh, that's got only two wires, the red and the black wire, uh, for the lights that are coming from the, the wing. And so with that, I got everything plugged into my receiver. Uh, I bound it to my radio, did the programming of my radio, and that was um, what I've been doing while we were away. So I'm ready now to put the wing on. Now I do want to make a point and point out to you this uh, universal BEC that I just mentioned. And as you can see, I've got it right down here. And it's just a re relatively inexpensive piece, seven or eight bucks. Um, it'll take up to 40 volts. It outputs switch selectable five or six volts to the receiver. And then here's the wire that goes down um, to the uh, JST connector. So that's the source wire. And then coming off the, the, uh, the universal BEC here is the, um, the power wire that plugs into the battery bind switch on the receiver. Now the only other thing I want to point out to you is when you're doing this, you want to take the center or the red wire out of the connector that comes from the ESC because that's what's powering the uh, receiver if you're using the BEC that came with your ESC. And so I've disconnected that. I got a piece of heat shrink around it so it's not going to short anything out. And so now instead of using the BEC power um, from the ESC, I'm using this universal BEC power to power the receiver. What that allows me to do is to suffer a failure on the ESC and not lose control of the airplane because the BEC here is still receiving power from the battery. One of the things that you need to keep in mind is when you're using uh, the BEC that comes with your model or uh, that's mounted on the ESC itself is that when you start adding a lot of electric stuff on your model it's going to stress the, the BEC, which means that it's going to be generating heat. And the heat is not a friend to electronic components. And so by taking the BEC, moving it here, using a separate device, um, you're able to uh, reduce the stress on the BEC and gives you some redundancy or an alternate source of power for your flight controls. So if, if your ESC burns up, um, you've just lost the motor, you haven't lost the flight controls. And so with my larger models, that's one of the things uh, that I try to do. So with all of these Y connectors here, now it's time to put the wings onto the spar and connect all the uh, various components to get it into this very large space that's going to allow easy uh, access to my receiver and plenty of room for the wires. So you can see I put the wing on the spar. The spar had a little twist to it, so if when you put it together they don't join smoothly, it means you need to rotate that little aluminum spar a little bit because they'll fit nicely together. And then I've just taken the labeled um, Y cords that came from the receiver and have placed them in with the, um, the appropriate connector coming from each of the wings. And so we've got that all there and now it's just going to be a matter of smoothly and easily dropping the wing into the the place where it's molded to fit into the wing saddle right there. So let's take a look then at just screwing it on. The wing is secured with a couple of plastic pieces. A large one in the front will slide into the big holes molded into the plastic and then the small one in the back is just a single screw but it's got a couple of little uh, uh, connectors or uh, tips on it that will fit into some recesses right there in the back. So um, you can put that in there. It fits nice. You put it in the wrong way, mine just bumped up a little bit. So when I flipped it, it fits nice and flush. And then we're going to be using these large screws that came with the kit. And uh, we've got them right here. And it's just going to be a matter of dropping them into the receptacles and screwing them down. And that's all there is to that. So the next step that we've got going is to put in the uh, support rod or um, just the support for the, the wing. 
And uh, to, to do that, we've got a screw hole on this side, which is going to be on the, the fuselage side. And then here we've got a spring clip that makes it easy to remove. Just pull the clip out if you're going to take the wing off to transport it or for uh, other reasons. And so the side with the holes on the sides is going to go into this. And then the, the side with the hole through the front is going to go to the fuselage. So let's put that in. Fits there nicely. I'm using one of the 12 millimeter screws. Okay, so that's in there nice and tight. And then we've got this little spring clip that we'll be using to just uh, push through the side. Have to fish around for the hole a little bit, maybe. There we go. And the hole on the other side. And then it just clips over uh, very easily, just like that. So that's all there is to do to get the, the wing supports on there. So we're just about done with our assembly. And what we've got left to do is just a couple of the trim pieces. And so in a separate package, you have two little exhaust stacks. And there's just kind of a screw on, <clears throat> and then they flare out. So instead of strip uh, kind of extending down the fuselage, which you're used to seeing in a lot of these full-scale models, this one just kind of flares straight out. Now you'll notice here on the bottom that there's a larger size and a smaller size and that's because there's a little mounting plug here so make sure that you match those up and otherwise it's going to stick them on use one of these small screws that came with the package and then work it through with your screwdriver to get it started in there and we'll put the second screw second screw in exactly the same way so we're on the home stretch of our model and at this point we've just got a couple of things left to do uh, including adding the two antennas on the top of the um, of the wing i'm going to use just a little ca here of just standard ca medium viscosity uh, put a little on the end of this antenna kind of push it in pull it out get some good coverage the antenna is slanted backwards and there's a little plastic edge or extension on the front of it with the similarly modeled uh, foam or molded foam right there so it's easy to make sure you get it in right. And then the second antenna is just a vertical antenna. It doesn't have the, uh, the backward slant to it. And that goes into a similarly molded hole right there at the front. So now we've got the two antennas on and we're just about done. So the next thing we're going to do is connect the uh, control rods to the surfaces. I've got the elevator connected already. Here I'm about to connect the rudder and uh, I've slid the keeper past the clevis here, a plastic clevis that has a little snap right here. So I use this common screwdriver to open up the snap, um, move the, the peg over to the point where I want it and with the control horn hole that I have and then I'm just going to put some squeezing on it push it through there and it fit nice and tight you probably heard it snap together and then I'm going to take this little keeper and slide it up over the clevis it's just a little piece of like fuel tubing and we'll push it up over the clevis near the front there and that way it provides some extra support in case it were to snap out or come disconnected, it would still hold those pieces together and give you a little margin of safety on that control horn. As I mentioned before, just due to safety purposes, the last thing I'm going to do is put on the propeller. While I had the uh, electronics plugged into the battery, I put a piece of painter's tape on the end of the shaft and started the motor so I know it's rotating the right way. With an ARF, that's what you'd expect. If you were putting it together yourself, you may have to mix the wires to get the motor to rotate uh, the proper way. The kit comes with a pr uh, friction style collet, so we've got that right here and it just goes on very easily. You just slide the, uh, the shaft up through the, uh, the main shaft of the propeller uh, collet, slide the sleeve on top of that. Next comes the, um, the back plate of the spinner 
then the propeller, make sure that the numbers are on the front side so that it's going to be rotating properly. And now, um, while I was off camera, I also balanced the propeller to make sure that it was balanced. And it was really pretty close. A couple of scratches of sandpaper at the tip of uh, along the inside of the heavy side was all it took to bring it into perfect balance. Uh, finish up with the washer and then with a the little um, screw. And we'll put the screw on there. So with the bolt on, we'll just kind of slide the, uh, the nose cone over that. Wiggle it around a little bit to get it to fit in those grooves. And it does. So that's looking good. And then we'll just use these small screws that came with the uh, uh, in the packaging for the propeller. Slide it in there. And then screw it in to the receiver on the propeller propeller spinner plate. Now keep in mind when you're doing that you don't have to really wrench that down terribly tight because all you're doing is keeping the spinner on. It's not like you're holding the propeller on. The bolt's doing that. So uh, avoid stripping the uh, plastic receiver with these little screws and just kind of snug them in. As you can see I've got the model on my CG machine to check the weight and the balance. I had to make a couple of adjustments. First, I needed to push the battery back. And so I had it kind of in the tray that's molded here, but that 3,000 milliamp hour battery was just too heavy. It was very nose heavy when I did that. So I pushed the battery backwards. Now there's plenty of room to do that, but I'm going to go back in and put a battery strap in there so that I'd hate to have the battery sliding around a little bit. And that also means I'm going to have to make a little bit of a cut on the bottom of the hatch that fits there uh, for the battery stop because now instead of being a battery stop it's in the way because I needed the battery back a little bit further. After doing that I got the, uh, the CG better but still not quite right. And so back here is the trap door to the rear um, servos and so I put about an ounce of weight I had little lead stick on weights and I put them back right about here uh, as far back as I could reach to minimize the amount of weight. And so as you can see with that, uh, I've got the airplane balance, maybe just a touch nose heavy, which is what I want. Generally, the old saying goes that a nose heavy airplane will not fly well, but a tail heavy airplane will not fly long. And so having just a slight bit of nose down uh, will make the thing um, a little bit more stable, at least theoretically. So uh, we're in pretty good shape. So at this point, I will plug in the battery, uh, finish up with uh, putting that battery strap in, and then show you all the flight controls in action. So we've got everything hooked up. I've got the battery secure in the front. I made a little bit of a cut there on the battery hatch so uh, it would close tightly. And I've got the battery sitting back here, not in that uh, molded uh, area as I mentioned before. But here you can see we've got the, the ailerons moving. You maybe can see a reflection of the lights blinking there on my hand. Uh, and then let me raise it up here for you and you can see the flaps I've got set in two stages, uh, full flaps and half flaps. And so all in all it looks pretty good. So now for just a couple of closing comments. Uh, on the overall build of this uh, Artec uh, PC6 Porter. Um, the fit and finish of the airplane is really good. Panel lines are molded in. The decals uh, have been placed on very accurately. The things all match up and it looks really good. Uh, a couple of things that uh, I particularly like is the uh, bomb drop on the bottom. I plan to order a couple little parachute guys to stick in there. Uh, and then if you towed uh, gliders, you've got this uh, release here. On this one, I didn't even hook it up because I don't. Uh, have a glider to tow. Uh, the flight controls were all centered when I put them in and, and when I added the uh, put the clevises on the flight controls at the rear it only took a twist or a half a twist to uh, get them lined up uh, and have this all settled up all settled um, evenly smoothly um, and so I'm anticipating not to need a bunch of trim the first time I go out and fly it. There's a lot of room up front for the battery so that depending on the battery that you're using uh, you have a lot of room to move it forward aft to get the CG right. And then as I mentioned, because of where I had the battery and I didn't want to push it any further aft, I did add some weight in the back, about an ounce, uh, four pieces of those little four uh, quarter ounce uh, sticky weights. Uh, but having a hatchback here allowed you to put in a minimum amount for the maximum amount of impact because 
of the, the moment arm of having it way back in the tail. The other thing that I discovered is I uh, mentioned early in the build that it said it needed a uh, 20 millimeter uh, screw for the uh, supports to the landing gear. I'm thinking that's the, the screw that they put in or it was just a misprint. I ended up with uh, a couple of extra screws of the 8 millimeter size and so I think that uh, supporting or um, locking this front uh, we, uh, support in the strut in with an 8 millimeter screw probably would have been okay and I wouldn't have had to use that long screw that that clearly went into the supporting structure underneath but they're plenty secure. The other thing I didn't do is I didn't screw the bottom of the support in that little uh, fixture where it fits at the bottom of the landing gear. A lot of people have commented that a rough landing can sometimes break these these spars and so I left it unglued so it just kind of sits in that that cradle so it gives a good look. Uh, the springiness is in the, the metal part of the landing gear itself and so if you do spring you've got a little bit of springiness there before you're actually putting pressure on the strut and so we'll see how that works. If they end up falling out or uh, sliding out of the little pocket down at the wheel end I can always put the screws back in but in this case uh, I've chosen not to do that just for the uh, uh, little bit extra uh, springiness that you might get there. So all in all I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out to the flying field. The all-up weight is reasonable considering how big the airplane is. Uh, it's not as heavy as you might expect and so let's take it outside. We'll do a little bit of a video walk around and then we'll take it to the field. Hope you've enjoyed and found this video helpful.